Welcome to History's Darkest Questions. Today's video is The Last Dance, The Strasbourg Dancing Plague, The Medieval Curse. In the sweltering summer of 1518, the streets of Strasbourg, now part of modern-day France, became the stage for one of the most bizarre and disturbing events in history, known as the Dancing Plague. It began innocuously enough with a single woman, Frau Trophia, who stepped into the street and began to dance. Within days, dozens more joined her, cursed by an uncontrollable compulsion to dance without rest. This was no jubilation. It was a medieval nightmare that would grip the city for weeks, leading to numerous deaths from exhaustion, heart attack, and stroke. Imagine witnessing a loved one's body betray them, their feet bleeding, and their faces twisted in torment as they danced to their deaths. This haunting spectacle was not isolated. By the end of the first week, the number of afflicted had ballooned to over 100. The desperate populace sought explanations. Was this divine punishment, possession by a demonic force, or a mass hysteria triggered by the incessant strife and famine plaguing the region? The city council, puzzled and terrified, called upon physicians and clergy, though their remedies ranged from the bewildering to the downright brutal. The physicians of the time attributed the plague not to physical disease, but to a phenomenon they termed hot blood. They prescribed more dancing as the cure, convinced that the afflicted needed to dance away the fever. Professional musicians were hired and a stage was erected, transforming the streets into a macabre dance floor. Efforts to treat the dancers met with tragic results, leading to further casualties and a heightening of the collective fear and hysteria. Families watched in horror as their relatives collapsed, their lifeless bodies discarded once the dance finally claimed them. The church believed that the only recourse was divine intervention. A pilgrimage to the shrine of St. Vitus, the patron saint of dancers, was organized. Altars were erected, and the town's clergy prayed and performed exorcisms in a desperate attempt to break the unyielding curse. Those who survived were left with not only physical scars, but also deep psychological trauma, haunted by the memories of what they saw and experienced. As the weeks dragged on, the epidemic showed no sign of abating. The physical toll on the dancers was horrifying. Reports spoke of feet worn down to the bone, limbs flailing beyond their owner's control, and faces contorted in a combination of agony and unfathomable fatigue. Supplies of food and water had to be forcibly administered to keep the relentless dancers alive. The city was gripped by a palpable sense of terror, not knowing who would be next or how to stop the inexplicable madness that had seized their otherwise peaceful lives. While the most immediate effects were ghastly, the long-term impact on Strasbourg was profound. The death toll was never precisely recorded, but estimates suggest that several dozen people perished either from physical exhaustion, heart attacks, or strokes induced by the endless hellish dance. Those who survived the ordeal carried with them not only a lasting fear of the inexplicable, but also a profound distrust in the institutions that had failed to protect them, from the ineffective medical professionals to the clergy whose prayers had gone unanswered. The underlying causes of the Strasbourg dancing plague remain a topic of speculation. Modern theories include ergot poisoning, caused by a psychoactive mold that grows on damp rye, potentially inducing hallucinations and involuntary movements. Others point to mass psychogenic illness, a type of collective hysteria symptomatic of extreme stress and tension within the community. Moreover, societal malaise, marked by widespread disease and famine, could have created an environment ripe for such a psychological outbreak. By late September, the outbreak had mysteriously ended, as abruptly as it had begun. Exhausted and traumatized, the survivors attempted to rebuild their lives amidst the lingering fear of a recurrence. The dancing plague of Strasbourg remains an enigma, a chilling reminder of how fragile the human condition can be under the weight of unseen forces, be they physical, psychological, or supernatural. To this day, it stands as one of the most mystifying and harrowing episodes in medieval history. The conclusion of the dancing plague left a scar on Strasbourg that would be remembered for generations. 
It serves as a dark testament to the human body's vulnerabilities and the often desperate and misguided attempts to counteract mass crises. The dancing plague was a medieval curse that danced its way into infamy, leaving behind a legacy of unanswered questions and somber reflections.